It's pretty often I'll talk to couples in crisis and it's it becomes pretty clear that one of the spouses is chasing them into recovery. It could be the unfaithful is trying to chase the betrayed to, come on, go to the EMS weekend or take a course or meet with this counselor or let's do this and this and this and they're just not ready. And then there's obviously the betrayed. And this is, I think, a, a real struggle. The betrayed is trying to chase their ambivalent unfaithful into recovery. And I, I want to talk about that today. I want to make it very easy for you and tell you that you just can't. To some, I know that's a controversial statement, but the reality is is that you just can't chase them into recovery. Because number one, if you have to chase them to love you or to pursue you, you'll be chasing them probably the rest of the marriage. Uh, they have to want to pursue restoration. If they're a betrayed, and if you are the unfaithful and you're trying to hammer them and chase them and we got to do this and we got to do this, you might be wounding them even more. You're definitely probably bullying them and you're definitely probably pushing them away from you because you're trying to control them. And I'm sorry, they're so hurt, so violated, so betrayed, so wounded, so angry, you're not going to be able to bully them into recovery. If you are a betrayed and you're trying to chase your unfaithful spouse into recovery, I want to tell you to stop because it's probably not going to work and it's going to frustrate the hell out of you and it's going to even do some damage possibly to the equilibrium of your marriage and your recovery. What I mean is I think you might want to consider the possibility of moving into more of a consequential approach, which is kind of looks like this. I would like to go to an EMS weekend. If you do not want to go to an EMS weekend, then I need you to know that here's going to be the consequences. And, and there's a variety of things, and I don't want to take this time to get into the consequences, but you, you probably are going to have to approach it with a, if you won't do A, then B and C and D is coming your way. And if you want to live with B, C, and D, which could be separation, it could be divorce or filing for divorce, it could be um, asking your spouse to sleep in the guest room, it could be a short-term separation. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you could, it's, it definitely could be, we're not having any sexual intimacy because I'm not going to make myself incredibly vulnerable just for you to not do what I need to heal. So. Chasing just really doesn't work when you're trying to get into recovery. If your spouse doesn't want to take necessary action that you're wanting to see them take as a betrayed, I would encourage you to pull back and say, okay, if, if you are not willing to do what I'm asking you to do because I need it to heal and I want it to heal and I think it would be best for us then I'm pulling back. And if you can't see the writing on the wall, that's fine. But here's what's coming your way. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. I'm going to ask you to do this. And if you're not willing to do those things, well, then here's the next level of consequences. Because a lot of times the unhealthy, the unfaithful, the self-deceived, they don't respond to emotional ploys. They don't respond to appeals. They don't respond to even bargaining as much as they respond to, hey, if you're not going to do this, then here's what you're going to live with. That's just kind of the bottom line. It's what happened with me. Samantha said to me, either we get the best help possible when we move to Austin or we're going to separate and I'm probably going to file for divorce uh, and we'll have a structured separation, but I'm not going back to business as usual. I'm not going to live with you coming and going as you please without a support system in place with the, which will be the best help we can afford and we can find in Austin. I mean, there was no way around it. That was the expectations. So chasing your spouse, especially if you're a betrayed, only reinforces an air of codependency and it kind of drives them away. I mean, why would they come back or why would they pursue you if you are always pursuing them? And I've experienced that dynamic in our own marriage. 
And so I had to really experience a recalibration to pull back and say, if I'm always chasing Samantha, where is the freedom and the liberty for Samantha to ultimately chase me? So there has to be a change to the dynamic of the marriage. So if you, the betrayed, have to chase your spouse, something's wrong. Ask yourself, why do I need to chase them? Am I really in control of what they do anyway? Because you couldn't control whether or not they had an affair. You're not going to be able to control whether or not they pursue you. You are in charge of your own actions and you can make life a living hell for them if they continue in their affair and if they continue in their deception and if they continue in their callous behavior. Absolutely. But you can't chase them into pursuing you or chase them into recovery. They have to be willing to do it. Even if it's a begrudging decision, the fact is if they're willing to get help, that's all the difference in the world. I know I said a lot today, but I sure hope that helps. You can always ask me any questions. You can always post a comment. I'll do my best to give you all the help I can.